Welcome to Fitness Forever TV with m and Your source for entertainment television. Are you transitioning or trying to transition into a more plant-based lifestyle but can't get away from some of your favorite old cuisines? Yeah, like Mexican food? Yeah, like Mexican food, which is normally inundated with lots of heavy cheese and meats. But today, we have a very special guest on our show, Chef Fee from Cuba. But first, the intro. Hey guys, welcome to the kitchen, but more importantly, let's welcome Chef Fee onto the show. Thank you for coming here today and cooking us an amazing meal. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Yes. yes. For your information, Chef Fee could be found at Cuba in Armature Works, where they serve high-end, authentic Cuban food. So if you haven't been there yet, please go check her out. But we're lucky enough to have Fee on the show today, and she's going to take a Mexican dish, the enchilada, and she's going to make it plant-based friendly for us today. So Fee, can you tell me? First off, what a traditional enchilada is made of and how we are veganizing it today. Sure. So the traditional enchilada is usually made with a stewed pork or chicken. Um, and it's got a lot of flavor in it, lots of spices and fresh herbs and whatnot. So what we're going to do is take out the meat aspect, okay. keep all the flavor, Ooh. and then just substitute with um, protein as in like mushroom, spinach. I've got Peruvian potatoes that have a little bit more higher content in protein. Okay. Um, so we're filling it with that. And then we've got the cashew cream, which we're going to do. So that'll add a little bit more protein aspect to it. But it's very filling, um, super delicious, very flavorful. Um, and you wouldn't even miss the fact that there is no meat in there, honestly. I served it to my boys uh, a couple months ago, and they were like, Mom, this is amazing. So, you know, so this it, is a... For someone who's perhaps never eaten vegan before, mm -hmm. this would be a good starter dish. Oh, very, yes. It's very simple to make. Um, nothing too difficult. Um, pretty quick. And like I said, lots of flavor, so. Yeah, and what I really like about it is that I am plant-based, as most of you all know who watch the show. And I'm not a big fan of fake meats. And what I love about this dish is that you're not incorporating any of those fake meats. No. Um, I don't, for me, vegan is more of a journey of enjoying the things that are fresh. Yeah. Things that are really there for you to nurture your body properly mm -hmm. instead of, you know, putting anything in your body that's defeating the purpose and maybe even causing you harm. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you're literally in that process. So it's a healthier approach mm -hmm. to nutrition, but still getting 100% of the deliciousness. Of the deliciousness, which so, is important. Yes, it is. So tell me, what do what are we looking at here? What do we have? Okay, so as far containers? as spices, um, we have Mexican oregano. Okay. Uh, we have cumin. This is, chipotle. this is chipotle. This is smoked paprika. This is coriander. This is pink salt, which I always use cooking. All right. Um, uh, the shiitake mushroom, some uh, radish for garnish on top. Serrano is going to go in the sauce. And these are kind of like our... Yeah. And then we're going to just put it in the sauce as well. We're going to top the enchiladas with some fresh avocado. Um, but first, I'm going to make the sangria. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I'll drink first to get the appetite yes, going. Yes, to get the appetite going. All right, so tell me I about did this. A little, I did a little one that's kind of like, um, it's going to play with the sangria. Yeah, yeah. So it's got a little jalapeno and fresh um, pineapple and passion fruit juice. And we're going to add a little white wine. Ooh. Um, I'm not adding any sugar to this. Um, but we're going to use the natural sugar that the fruit has, and if this wants to come off. So it's a little spicy, kind of like a little bit of an amuse boost to get your appetite going. Mm -hmm. um, to... So tell me, what inspired you to start creating more vegan-friendly dishes? Um, so believe it or not, uh, I have to say COVID has been a really good thing for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wow, I, you don't hear that one a lot. No, you don't hear it a lot. I wanted to take the positive aspect into it, and I didn't want to turn... Because for me, personally, this could have been something really good or something really bad. Mm -hmm. I know, I, being in the restaurant industry during the time of COVID is much... Emotional must, eater, you know what I mean? I could have been... I could have gained a lot of weight, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to go back, and I wanted to really hone in on the fact that I can do, you know, vegan recipes and still eat healthy... And I was tired of having inflammation. I was tired of feeling mm -hmm. tired. I was tired of having bad skin problems. I mm -hmm. was tired of a lot of things. Yeah. So, and, and mental, even mental. I've noticed that I'm a lot happier. I feel like a lot of more, a lot more energy. 
Um, the depression is not like, mm -hmm. it doesn't kick in as weird as yeah, they I mean, sound it, but I know the food has really a lot to do with your chemical um, yeah. balance in your brain, the hormones. So to me, that was like, while well, I was reading into it, it's important. Yeah, what you put into your body is what comes out yeah. and it's not just the physical, it's also the emotional yeah. and the mental well-being, yeah. uh, but the energy levels. I mean, these are all things that I've been saying about being plant-based. It's not just, I'm not eating meat, but the inflammation mm -hmm. is it's amazing crazy. in regards to what foods cause it and how just eating simple whole foods will really reduce those the inflammation and improve your mood altogether. And inflammation and a lot of things and you know people who have heart um, disease and mm -hmm. diabetes and things that you can naturally cure yourself of with just eating proper food. Yeah, right. And then the other great thing about being plant based is that I'm never counting calories. I'm never worried mm -hmm. about oh my gosh, am I eating way too much because I know what I'm putting into my body is going to yeah. be really good. And I'm yeah. really excited to put this yes. into this body. Yes. I'm going to go check on our okay. sauce that we've got going on back here. So I know you can't see it, but mm -hmm. we're toasting off some poblanos. Okay. So these are going to go in our sauce. Ooh. So this is our um, mole verde sauce in a sense. So the tomatoes get charred, everything gets charred. And then we're going to put it in the oven for a little bit after this is here. And then yes. the cashew sitting in vegetable stock. Okay, and this is for the cashew crema. Yeah, this is going to be the cashew crema. Okay, so tell me about this because um, I get this in packages. So show me or tell me the process of how you make it from its raw state because okay. I love this stuff. Do you? Yes. Okay, so for raw state. So you want to blend, or you want to steep them in hot water. Okay. So they're gonna get soft. Um, they're gonna get super creamy. So from here, just it's, trans it's super simple. If you do it just like this, you can transform this base into so many things. Like I've done this base with Caesar dressing, um, mm. the cashew crema. Um, I mean, whatever you honestly, anything that's cream based, Alfredo. Oh God, yeah. I've done Alfredo. I would with love this. that. Oh I've yeah. Done, um, uh, cacio pepe with this as okay. well, like parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. and soup. So there's a lot of things. All right, do. yeah, because I love, love, love this. They yeah. use this a lot in Green Chef. Yeah. And the food they send me. So. Oh really? Yeah. Oh cool. Okay. okay. So this is this is going. This should be good to go. So um, where do you find your inspiration in the kitchen? What inspires you? What do I want to eat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Yes. Thank you. Um, I've been blessed enough to be in the industry where I've. I have really soaked in a lot of different, you know, cuisines. It's not just been Mexican. You know, my mother's Mexican. Okay. I own a Cuban restaurant, but my grandmother's Mexican, or my grandmother's Cuban. I have a little bit of everything. And then I worked in an Asian restaurant. I worked in breakfast. I worked Italian. So I really kind of grasp a little bit of everything. And whenever I'm in the mood to eat something different, I've been mm -hmm. able to like, okay. I'm going to make it. Yeah. I'm yeah. Do. Okay. I do vegan kimchi at home. Wow. Um, that one's really good. That's a really good recipe. That one I have to share. <laughs> okay, please do. That one's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so then this, we're going to go with this right into the blender. And it needs to sit for about 30 minutes. Okay. So it gets super soft. Okay. And then if you can hand me over the cilantro, please. Thank you. You're welcome. It's always good when you're at home to keep them in fresh water the last longer. Oh, that's a great tip. Thank yeah, you. I didn't know welcome. that one either. Yep, parsley. Parsley is really well too. So we're going to put one handful. Okay. You really want it to be robust in the cilantro. Mm. Then I'm going to squeeze the fresh lime inside. The nice acidity. Bring that pop mm. of flavor Yes. Out. And I like a little bit of heat, so I'm going to put a little bit of um, serrano into it. Um, is that okay? Oh, yeah, more. Okay. Bring the heat. Okay. Yeah. Make it burn. Make it burn. Um, okay. All right. Garlic. And the serrano. Everything is going to get blended together. Yeah. Not too, too bad. And garlic, I, I love garlic. Mm-hmm. Um, I put garlic in almost everything. In everything. The flavor. Yes, yes. It's definitely, you know, there's some 
controversy against it. And, and I'm like, you know, it's not good. What's the so garlic good controversy? Well, if you're doing like the Dr. Sebi kind of deal, diet, you know, if you mm-hmm. want to right. alkaline your body, and it's not really good for it. But I believe that everything in, in balance is mm-hmm. good for you. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And we give it a pinch of salt. All right. Is a specific type of salt that you use? Himalayan pink salt. Mm-hmm. Organic Himalayan pink salt. Always. Always. Yes. So, you know, as a chef and becoming, you know, moving and integrating more plant-based dishes into your life and your lifestyle, has that in any way changed your craft as, as a chef and your profession? Oh, yeah. I think it's made me more of a better chef. Yeah. Honestly, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. That's the best answer I could have asked for. <laughs> Go vegan. No, yes. Yes. <laughs> I think you're really able to focus on flavor. Yes. You know what I mean, that's a, that's. I feel like that's what we miss a lot. Um, people want to go crazy with ingredients and crazy over the top with presentation and eat things that you're just like, oh my god, it's so beautiful and delicate. I kind of don't want to touch it because I don't want to mess it up. But at the end of the day. When you go out to eat, you're like, wow, I want something to hit my soul. Yes. I want something that I'm going to remember and I'm going to come back to eat it. Mm-hmm. And that's flavor. When yeah. you put love and passion and flavor, those three, forget it. Wow. It's endless. I'm so happy it's that endless. becoming more plant-based has made you an even better chef. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. great. Yeah, because you can really taste everything. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, Then you're really like, okay, what am I going to do with this? I know this goes well together and mushrooms are very earthy. I need to bring out yeah. this something that's a little bit acidic. You know, it's that umami flavor of having all the, you know, everything in one and just like, wow, it's a burst of flavor. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It's a beautiful thing. All right. Oh, the mushrooms. Yeah. So I think, you know, veganism being plant-based has definitely become more of a clearly defined movement. Oh. Why do you think people are choosing to go towards that direction? The same. The same reasons that I did. Not wanting to feel like crap, you know, and, and just wanting... I think people are, not I think, I know people are just becoming more aware. More aware of the things that does damage to your body. You know, knowing that, you know, you can really stay healthy. Because it's, it's not about the looks. You know, it's about staying healthy. It's about mm-hmm. feeling good inside. The rest is going to fall into place. But yeah. that's a big bonus, you know. Yeah, it is a major bonus. It's a big bonus when you wake up and you're like, wow, my ache, I know my, my knee doesn't hurt. Or my, my bones don't ache. Or, you know, I don't feel lethargic. Slug- yeah, or exactly. sluggish. Or I'm tired. Or I can't get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, you know. It's, it's important. Yeah. It's really important. All right. So these are shiitake mushrooms. Okay. I am going to crisp these up. Ooh. I have some smoked. Um, I bought some really special smoked. Um, Extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> what is this extra virgin olive oil you speak of? Um, this smokes that gives it another dimensional flavor. Um, so that way, because, you know, typically Mexican cooking is done over an open fire. Oh, okay. So there is a lot of um, kind of like that smokiness, that depth of flavor in that sense. There's like barbacoa, that's what they call it. Sophie, what kind of advice would you give to someone who is looking to start becoming more plant-based? or integrating more plant-based um, nutrition into their lifestyle? I would say transition into it um, easily. You know, Don't go so hard at the beginning, only because I've, I feel like, I mean, it's a, it's a difficult transition. I grew up eating, you know, I'm a Latina, so I grew up eating beef every day or chicken every day, or my mom, you know, there was always some kind of stew of beef or mm-hmm. palomilla steak, you know? So, and then growing up into an adult, you know, we ate like that because I had the boys. And so transitioning was just little by little. Yes. Not going hardcore because then when I noticed that when I did it and I even like um, ordered food from other places that are vegan just to kind of like help me, I just couldn't stick to it. Yeah. I couldn't stick to it. A, the food wasn't that good. And I'm like, oh, this kind of tastes like, oh, this is yeah. not, this is, is this what vegan food is? And I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is not going to last long. But then, you know, I was like, okay, wait a second. You're a chef. Um, get it together. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna transition little by little, and I've always kind of I don't do much dairy. I don't do dairy at all right now. Um, before I'm talking before I completely transitioned to like, my vegan was was very light and I yeah. milk. You know, was kind of like the cheese because I'm a chef and yogurt every and sour cream. But mm-hmm. other than that, but I would say just go easy. Yeah, little by little. Little by little. You know what I mean? Um, just make sure that you, you know. Yeah. Probably just consume less meat. You know, I would say at the beginning, if you eat, you know, let's say beef three times a week, 
I'd probably go to one time a week. Right. You know? And I think, too, what's important is that as you take things out of your nutrition, you're exploring and adding new things in. Yeah. Which, right. uh, that's the thing that's misconception that people don't, I think that's something that people don't do, is they want research and be like, okay, what am I going to eat? Right. And they tend to eat the same thing over again, because yeah. I have family members that I know, that they eat, they've been, you know, vegetarians for a while, and then kind of, mm -hmm. it's just... Right. And just because, like, oh, all right, well, now I'm not eating meat, but I could eat all the French fries that I want. Yeah, or potato no. chips, or rice. Right. Or pasta. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because totally go not, overboard. Yeah, and go overboard, and you can really gain weight. I mean, you could be really unhealthy and still... Yes. And still mm -hmm. be vegan. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, no matter what your nutritional approach is, whether it's a veganism, keto, paleo, you can take something that's supposed to be healthy and totally make it unhealthy, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's just, it's, it's taking it to the extreme, mm -hmm. you know, um, and not having a perfect balance. Though. Right. Like for, uh, like we were saying with plant-based people, oh, you can eat all the pasta you want, yes. you can eat all the chips you want, or with keto, you can, you can eat, eat all, all the, the bacon, bacon you the want. Cheese and everything. I see it and I'm like, wow, I'm like, this is not what it's supposed to be. Right. Because you take it, it's not only like balanced, but it's hard. I feel like people... Denial. Yes. Denial <laughs> is... <laughs> or it's an easy way yes. out. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. want to stop eating my bacon and my yeah. cheese. Oh, so it says... Keto! Like, yes, yeah. I'm going to eat all the bacon and cheese I want. But honestly, it's just been... And even training my kids, they now have gotten... At the, at the beginning, it was hard. Because they're like, oh, vegetables again. And oh, and you know what I mean? And their mom is a chef, so you, they eat good. Right. Regardless. And I'm like, come on, you guys. Are you serious? Give it a go. Give it a go. So it took me some time, and just like them, it was just little by little and little by little. Not like I did all seven days, mm -hmm. you know, of like vegan food, but it was little injections here and there just to get them ready. Yeah. And now it's been like, now I guess, yeah, now it's. Not a there. question. Not a question. What I've got going on now is we did the prep for the top of the t of the enchiladas. Okay. Uh, the potatoes are almost done. I'm Amazing. gonna take out the sauce, which I think is almost done. Wow, delicious. During the pandemic and during the time of quarantine, you really took up the craft of discovering more vegan cooking and cuisine and experimentation. Loving myself more. Yeah, and then what was incredible is that after the pandemic, uh, Fee and I work out at the same gym together, but when we came back from the quarantine and when I saw her, I was like, wow, her <laughs> transformation was amazing. Within that three months, I was like, what have you been doing? Yeah, and I was, that's when I was like, oh, I uh, converted to being a true, like, vegan, really going hard with it, um, and doing in-home exercises, and drinking a lot of water, and not allowing my discipline mm -hmm. to not snack at home, because the boys have a different snack, you yeah. know what I mean? They have, you know, things that are a little bit like Cheez-Its, or, yeah. you know, like the organic crackers and things like that that they can eat, you know, I can't eat that because calories add up, especially when you're trying to lose weight. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so I noticed a big more. difference. Yeah, I noticed a big difference. Like the cellulite is starting to diminish because it's not like the cheese, it's not fats, they're not bad fats, so your body is not holding on to that. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed my face has gotten a lot um, thinner and just cleaner, yes. more, not as, mm -hmm. you know, red as it used to be or um, breaking out all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, you just have this glow about you. Yeah, like, when we came yeah, back from the quarantine, yeah. I was like, she's glowing. Yes. You really yes. are. Yeah. You look actually, amazing. I just I bought that book, um, uh, There She Glows. So it's a cookbook. Oh, okay. And I actually worked out of that, and I did a lot of recipes, and I can't remember the name of the chef. That's okay. There She but Glows. There though. She Glows is the book, and that was phenomenal. It was All a right. lot of plant-based. Um, a lot of it was raw, so it was really good. Yes. Gut health for mm -hmm. you. Um, it's like another step. <laughs> oh, it is. That's oh, it definitely step. is. It definitely mm -hmm. is. Which I love, part. It's All right, good. well, something smells good over here. Oh, oh yes. hey, Brad. <laughs> wow. Mmm. Mm, I know. No, I've been no, slaving good. away. Oh, I'm slaving sure. away. She has been. I know. She handed me the cilantro. And I smashed yeah. the potatoes all, all by right. myself. Potatoes. See that? Wow. I'm looking forward to how this actually these puzzle pieces go together. No one's ever together. smashed potatoes like I have. Yeah. 
Um, so I use chickpea. Ooh. I don't use flour. I can't. I'm, I don't do gluten. So I have a quick question. Yes. Sir. Um, where did your journey start? The fitness. What you said that you didn't want to feel good, but you lost ninety pounds. What was the what was the the driving force at that point to get you started? Because that's what a lot of our a lot of our audience members okay, so are going to be I talking about. I had lost my mom, and she was in a in a long battle of COPD, right? Overweight, and whenever I would give her meal, because I used to have a meal prep company, so whenever I would feed her meal prep and she would lose weight, she'd do a lot better. And it just, she was in, just in a bad place, you know, just bad relationship, just unhealthy. And I just know I just didn't want to be that way. I had lost the baby too. I, had, I was, I, we were pregnant, I was four months, and I had a miscarriage, and I gained a lot of weight. So I gained weight between losing my mom and then having that, and I was like, you know what, I just, I need to get off the couch. I put myself in my house literally for three months, and I did not leave. I was so like, oh yeah, devastated. the restaurant, I was devastated, the restaurant can handle itself, I'm like, you know, yeah, and I was like, I woke up one day and I was like, I saw myself in the mirror and I was like, oh, whoa, and I saw the pictures at my mom's funeral and I was like, you know what, I was never, I promised myself that I was never going to let myself go, because I lost a lot of weight, I had gotten divorced and I had gotten my shit together and I lost a lot of weight. And I gained, I lost a little weight to the point where I was like, wow, I was taking pictures and people were like, wow, this, I looked like a new person. I looked like a new person and then I got into a relationship, all this happened, my mom, the baby, and then I gained it back. And I did myself a disservice, but I feel like now I am, it came, I've been able to lose it faster because I was a lot more knowledgeable. And now I know that I cannot let myself go because I have to really truly love myself because I'm the one who's in control of my happiness. I'm the one who's gonna be able to make this flourish and make this work. No one's gonna put it to me, no one's gonna do it for me. Mm -hmm. And I need to wake up, because yeah. I need to survive for my kids. I need to continue, I wanna grow. God has a bigger purpose for me. I know that I have much more to do in life to fulfill than just opening up a restaurant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, you know what? Yeah, I can't do this anymore to myself. I was so unhappy, uh -huh. oh, so unhappy. But now, Forget about it. <laughs> now, now it's amazing. Now it's amazing. It really is amazing. And um, just feeling amazing is just, it's just, it's, I recommend it to a lot of people. What was your first steps? My like first when, you, when, you, when you decided, you were right there. You what decided. I decided was A, I had to mentally, because that's the first step, mentally accept it. Mentally accept that I fed up. Mentally accept the fact that I need to better my health. You took accountability. I took accountability. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, so what I need to do is A, I need to start drinking more water. I need to get up and get more exercise going. That's how I started. So I started with the exercise part. Um, I was still eating kind of like not so healthy at the beginning. Not, I shouldn't say that. I was eating healthy, but I was eating proteins, like here and there, scattering. Because I was like, oh, what am I going to fill in? And then I started reading. Then I started educating myself. And, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to substitute? What can I do? Spirulina. There's just so many things you can put in your smoothies and incorporate different types of proteins into your, you know, um, pea protein or having mm -hmm. um, the Sanchi Inchi protein. That it's, uh, they sell it at, at um, Sprouts. So it's a, it's a, it's a nut that okay. comes out of Peru, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And it's super high in protein and it's very, very good for your hand, high in antioxidants. And it's a vegan source of protein as well. It's a nut based? It's a nut based. Okay. It's called Sanchi Inchi. Oh, that's yeah. one I've never even heard of. And there's another one at Whole Foods called Baru Nuts. And those have nine grams of protein in a small handful. Okay. And they're amazing. It tastes like between an almond and a peanut. How about the fat content on um, that? Um, not know? too, too high. Okay. Um, I know. Because for me personally, I know I can go crazy on nuts. No, I think it's it's not bad. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. It's not too, too bad. Um, but then, then that was my transition. It was just, you know, okay, I'm going to eat. What can I do to eat this and substitute this? I'm working out. I'm drinking more water. And now I have to eat less, but eat more concentrated, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, more nutrient. Right, more nutrient dense. Yeah. More nutrient dense, yes. yes. Nutrient dense food. So let me wash okay. my hands. I'm going to start building the enchiladas. All right. So I am going to put a little base. All right, we've got. Actually, okay. This is the base. This is the base. A little bit of spinach. Some mushrooms. Mm. 
<laughs> so I'm say. Mm. Oh, these are the potatoes these I smashed. The smash. I did that. I She's did the smasher. that. Smasher. So we're gonna do these. Over. Wowzers. So this is one. Okay. Oh. So with this enchilada, you don't have to bake it because usually enchiladas you bake because mm -hmm. you bake the sauce on top. Enchilada is traditionally Mexican. It's like leftover mole sauce or leftover mole, mm. you know. Yes. Um, and, and it doesn't have to sauce. go in specific order, by the way. Is it traditional, like it's a chocolate-based sauce, yes. right? Well, traditionally, yes. Yeah? Um, depending on the region, because okay. there's different types. Because I do love mole. Yeah. Enchilada sauce that goes right on top. Wow. Served. Wow. wow. How lucky are we? That here? looks yeah. amazing. Thank you. Enchilada, vegan enchiladas. Mm -hmm. Or what? how would you actually yeah. call the just um, vegan enchiladas? Vegan, vegan enchiladas, uh, purple potato vegan enchiladas with uh, a roasted poblano um, uh, salsa verde and a, cashew, a cilantro cashew and crema. Mm. Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so nice much. You. This was a blast. This was so so you. if if you're already smelling this through that, because just by <laughs> just by us telepathically sending you this smell, uh, go ahead and like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, give us a comment if it's if it's something that you'd like to try. Or we'll maybe there's another uh, traditional non-based vegan dish out there that oh, you would yeah. like to see veganized. You could let us know in the comments. For sure. Absolutely. But until next time, stay, stay motivated. motivated.